my bitch ass goats. Okay, my bitch ass goats, please annihilate that like button like Genghis Khan. <laughs> This is Andrew Hales, and this is his channel, Lorf. He was once one of the biggest YouTube pranksters in the world. However, Andrew's days as a top YouTube prankster are long gone, and he's recently been working part-time sorting boxes in an Amazon factory. But where did it all go wrong? Well, you might think this is another story about the drastic rise and fall of another typical YouTube prankster that had it coming, well, it's not. This is the story of a talented creator who also comes with a cautionary tale that the heights of YouTube fame certainly don't last forever. So today, I'm gonna to be documenting the story of the channel Lorf and the man behind it, Andrew Hales. Hello, just wanted to say before the video begins, if you do enjoy my content, then please do consider hitting that like button and also subscribing and hit that bell notification. Thanks very much for watching. So let's rewind to 2012. Alongside being the year the world was supposedly set to end, it was also the year that Andrew Hales would begin his journey on YouTube. The earliest available upload is from March 26, 2012, 10 years ago. The video titled Almost Picking Up Chicks would give us a taste of exactly the type of content that was to come from Andrew. We're here at UVU on March 20th, 2012 and we're gonna almost pick up on some chicks. Um, excuse me. Uh, I, I've, uh, I've seen you in the halls uh, before, and I was wondering if you wanted to go out to... Uh, yeah. The video's description reads, I'm Andrew Hales, and this is how Lorf was born. Now the name LORF is actually an acronym that stands for Losing All Hope Was Freedom and it's a quote from the film Fight Club. Losing All Hope Was Freedom. Andrew would continue to upload public pranks and after only three months of doing so, would gain a small following of around 20,000 subscribers. The videos all had a similar feel and vibe where Andrew would create a very simple yet awkward scenario between himself and students on his college campus. Hey, I'm Andrew Hales. Uh, today we are going to uh, randomly stare at people and not break eye contact. In a very short period of time, things were moving along nicely for the channel. Subscribers and views were consistently coming in. However, things were soon about to skyrocket for the channel. On the 11th of June, 2012, Andrew uploaded the video holding people's hands. Hey, I'm Andrew Hales, and today we are going to walk close to people and hold their hand, or try to hold their hand. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> the video would gain four and a half million views in one week and as a result the channel would jump up by 50,000 subscribers from 20 to 70,000 subs. 2012 was really a case of being in the right place at the right time if you were a prankster on YouTube. It was the year that effectively a new era of prank content would begin to dominate the site. Vitaly ZDTV's Miami Zombie Prank would really be the video that would kick it all off and would lead to many of these prank channels being featured on local and national news stations, which in turn led to a huge interest on the site around public pranksters. Lorf was no different and featured on ABC News after the Holding Hands prank. What would you do if a total stranger came up to you in public and tried to hold your hand? Well, a group of guys found out and posted the results on YouTube, and now it's gone viral. Andrew Hales, he got a lot of strange looks and some startled reactions, but at least one person does end up holding his hand, at least for a few seconds anyway. <laughs> what do you think of this? If you haven't seen it, you should check, check it out. We want your reaction. What would you do if someone did this to you? The news feature would truly put Lorf on the YouTube map and the channel would surpass 250,000 subscribers in under a year. 
And while that may not seem like a lot of subscribers to many viewers today, if you go back 10 years ago, this was massive. With the attention on the channel, more national news outlets would feature Andrew after several of his videos went viral. Videos such as Awkward Elevator and Tipping Servers $200. I'm here with Stuart Edge and uh, we're just going around tipping servers $200 and seeing what happens. This video in particular would be one of the first examples on the site of a larger creator tipping people larger sums of money while they were at work. Of course, other YouTubers like Mr. Beast used to make these sorts of videos regularly and there's no doubt that he would have been influenced by Andrew when making these types of videos. Andrew would actually go on to explain many years later though that this video took a lot longer to film than it actually shows. We did it like eight times and oh. the people didn't react at all. Oh, no, no, really? Yeah, so we spent like 2100 <laughs> 2100 bucks or something. <laughs> and you only got a couple people to react. Right. We only so we like we just luckily, you know, magically miraculously edited this 2-minute video with these three reactions. <laughs> and cell phone footage and whatnot. And yeah, that blew up. That was, but yeah, I never want to do that again. There's no doubt that Andrew's content was very watchable. And while a lot of other pranksters around that time came across as loud and fake in their personalities, Andrew was quite the opposite. His monotone delivery and laid back personality made him a genuinely likable character. His video where he pretends to be the singer Macklemore outside of one of the Stars concerts was actually really quite a genius idea and landed him another viral video. Macklemore would see the video and even responded in a tweet. He went on to say, this dude gets free VIP for life. By the time 2014 came, Lorf had surpassed over 1 million subscribers, making it one of the most popular prank channels on the site at that time. However, with the massive growth of pranks on YouTube, many people found ways to go viral by simply faking their videos. And the formula was to hire paid actors and actresses in order to get the desired outcome and reactions for their videos. This was something that Andrew took to heart and didn't believe in, and as a result called those channels out for being fake. These days, um, going viral is easier than ever uh, with the application of these simple steps. Uh, you won't need talent, humor, or even originality for this formula to work. Um, think of a popular prejudice slash stereotype in society. The more controversial, the better. Then you, you, know, you get a few of your friends together and you act out a scene in public, uh, kind of demonstrating this prejudice as either true or surprise not true. Or whatever evokes a more emotion and you call it a social experiment and you play it off like it actually happened <laughs> and whether or not it's wrong or unethical isn't important because entertainment's entertainment and you'll make a fortune that's the secret to going viral these days <laughs> thanks for watching over the next year the channel would plateau slightly and growth wouldn't be as quick as it had been the year before andrew started to change up the type of content he would post and began uploading the occasional vlog and comedy sketches. Alongside this, he would continue to poke fun at other pranksters for their fake videos and would upload several satirical videos that mocked the typical style of staged pranks. Hi. Oh, hell, hi. You're, you're really cute. Oh, thanks. Can I possibly get your number? Yeah, sure. Okay, awesome, I'm Kendall. Hi, Andrew, yeah. It's really nice to meet you. Th yeah, you too. Nice shirt. Oh. Thanks. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, it, yeah, it fits me well. So, are you single? Um, I, <clears throat> I am, I am. Oh my gosh, that's a great shirt. Oh, thanks. Can I have your number? Yes. Now this was one of the things that I really love about Andrew was his ability to not take himself too seriously and happily post these videos on the channel despite the fact that they were satire. However, it wouldn't be YouTube if it didn't lead to some type of drama. Andrew's mocking of fake pranks would lead to Vitaly ZDTV calling him out in a now deleted drug fueled rant at other pranksters. In typical laid back fashion, Andrew had the best response to it all and didn't really care and quite literally just completely laughed it off. 
anything that any negative thing I've ever said about you is definitely because I've just been jealous and it's been an irrational thought and and I'm sorry <laughs> I don't know I don't know what I'm getting at I guess you should uh find happiness <laughs> and and not worry about other people. So things had been good for pranksters for a long time. The genre had dominated the site and gained millions of views for nearly four years. However, the reality was that as 2016 arrived, pranksters were on the decline. The popularity of the genre on the site was rapidly dropping and people had pretty much grown fed up of the fake pranks and their shameless behavior. While Andrew wasn't part of that group, his channel would feel the effects. And while views were still high, the days of getting 1 million views per video were slowly fading and over the next year, he had to adapt. He would begin a series that would be a mainstay on the channel for the next three years. The series was a podcast slash interview show called Chatting With. Initially, Andrew would begin interviewing well-known YouTubers such as Gabby Hanna, Cody Ko and Dax Flame to name a few, but he would eventually begin to interview and chat with people from all different backgrounds. Hey, I'm Andrew Hales. Welcome to another edition of Chatting With. <laughs> I'm here with Luke Eilers and he is, you have gone more than a year yeah, um, without touching yourself. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> The series overall was a success and showed that Andrew was far more than just a prankster and was a genuinely talented creator. Due to the popularity of the series, other YouTubers would begin to take inspiration from Andrew and use the same format for their content. Anthony Padilla of Smosh, for example, would begin using a very similar format in his series, I Spent a Day With. Around that time, YouTube had begun to push longer form content and it worked in Andrew's favor. His interview titled Chatting with a 23 year old stock trading millionaire has over 3 million views and many other videos in the series such as chatting with an ex adult film star or a flat earther also gained well over a million views. With the videos now being far longer in length than his old prank videos, there were a lot more ad breaks. So even if they didn't get huge views, Andrew was still earning plenty in ad revenue. However, with big earnings came the lifestyle that goes with it. He moved to Los Angeles where at one point, he was paying a rent of $3,600 per month. And by his own account, he was partying way too much. The Chatting With series had been a mainstay on the Lorf channel for three years, but unfortunately for Andrew, when COVID struck in March of 2020, the series had to be put on hold. Once again, Andrew had to adapt to the ever-changing landscape of YouTube and began posting lots of different types of content. From reacting to his old videos, to making ASMR fart noises with his hands, and his modern day classic titled YouTube's Litty Audio Library, where he dances to songs from YouTube's audio library. He brought back the chatting with series via video calls, but the viewing figures had sadly dropped in comparison to the face-to-face -face episodes. He then continued to post vlogs and other random videos, but eventually admitted that despite having over 2 million subscribers, the channel was in a bad place. Just my channel has been dying. I don't know what I've been, I've been pretty lost this year. It's been a very humbling year, definitely. <laughs> Very, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, ego shattering year for me. Following this, he continued to open up about his personal situation, and Andrew would explain that things financially had seriously gone downhill for him. Let's see how I became broke. <laughs> 2018 and 19 were big years, like. I think I made, I made about 250,000 in 2018 and about 200,000 in um, 2019. I just threw parties and I didn't know what I was doing. I thought, 
I thought, uh, so I had like 10 grand coming in a month, every month, and I just, for hardly doing anything, and it, YouTube kind of just spoiled me, and I just kept, um, I don't know, I guess I thought it would last forever. <laughs> but it started to go down and down and down, and I was partying more and more and more, and whatever, and there you have it. This video titled How I Became Broke was a very raw and real insight into something we hardly ever see from YouTubers. Andrew's transparency about blowing all of his money was a refreshing contrast to the usual million dollar house tour videos that we're used to seeing from bigger channels. His honesty and openness on thinking that YouTube would last forever is a cautionary lesson to many creators that think their YouTube fame will continue long into the future. And in Andrew's case, his future would mean having to get a part-time job with Amazon. So I got a job. It's with this company called Amazon. <laughs> From what I've seen and read about, all you're doing is sorting stuff for 10 hours. I've done factory work before. It's I know it sucks. It's been a decade since I've done it, but <laughs> I feel like it's going to give me a taste of reality, maybe help me wake me up out of my chronic nonchalantness towards oh YouTube a career. <laughs> I don't know. Nowadays, I find most YouTubers and creators manufacture their personality online and. A lot of what they say is just to please their audience and the masses and quite literally more often than not this results in a complete lack of authenticity. What I liked about Andrew's videos talking about his personal situation is that it's the complete opposite of that. It's as authentic as it gets and it's, it's real and while it's strange to say I feel like it's been a very long time since I watched a video on YouTube that was real and authentic. But Andrew's time at Amazon would only last a couple of months. He revealed in a video that he was quitting and would now take a job at a local cinema. Goats. Thank you so much for staying around. I quit Amazon. I can't, I'm never going back there. I will probably get a job at the movie theater actually near my house, uh, Regal something. <laughs> I'll give you the exact address soon enough where you can just come say hi to me. I don't, I mean, I haven't even applied yet, but in case you don't even realize, like everyone's hiring, so. So that's where the story of Lorf and Andrew Howes comes to an end for now. Usually I finish my videos with a big conclusion, but I'm actually gonna end it on a comment that I saw underneath a Lorf video that summarizes Andrew very well. The comment says, this guy's ability to be so vulnerable and relatable in front of camera is amazing. He has a large following but remains honest about how he really doesn't know what the hell he's doing. I love the vlogs because it's nice to know that someone else feels the way we all do. Much love to this goat. And I think that's a nice way to end the video. Andrew is a talented guy and his career has been full of ups and downs. So here's hoping that it's not over just yet. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Most of the visuals you saw in the video were made from my graphics templates, which will be available to purchase on my website, jfx.co.uk, which will be coming soon. So if you do want to jazz up your videos with a new set of transitions, storytelling assets or even a new like and subscribe template then keep an eye out as it will be coming soon or hit me up on my socials so thanks for watching and as usual please don't subscribe because i probably won't make one of these videos again